Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for the Battleship New Jersey Museum of Memorial. Today, we're going to talk about Admiral Halsey and his decisions during the Battle of Leyte Gulf. As the largest battleship in the fleet, New Jersey was often used as a flagship. Earlier in 1944, she had been used as Admiral Scruance's flagship when he commanded 5th Fleet. Now, in October of 1944, New Jersey was serving as Admiral William F. Halsey's flagship for the entire 3rd Fleet. Halsey was commanding 3rd Fleet during the invasion of the Philippine Islands and the subsequent Battle of Leyte Gulf. We are remembering the Battle of Leyte Gulf, fall October 24th and 25th, 1944, 75 years ago this week. During the battle, Admiral Halsey commanded 3rd Fleet from this spot where I'm standing right here, on the 03 level of the battleship, the Admiral's Flag Bridge. This is where he made the decisions which resulted in several of the battles and the forces that were used in them. When we attacked the Japanese battleships in the Savoyan Sea, Halsey was standing here while his carriers launched strikes, sinking the super battleship Musashi. During the Battle of Cape Engano, when we sank Japanese aircraft carriers, Halsey was on the bridge here, possibly regretting his decision to bring the battleship along with him in the North Run. Further to the south, American destroyers and escort carriers were under attack by Japanese battleships off the island of Samar. Halsey had left a cryptic message suggesting that he might detach his battleships and leave them to protect the San Bernardino Strait against Japanese battleships, but in the end decided not to divide his forces and take all of his ships north to attack the Japanese carriers. The age of the battleship was over, and aircraft carriers must be the predominant threat. In actuality, the Japanese carriers did not have enough aircraft to pose a threat to the American fleet, so they deployed their monstrous battleships to try and overwhelm the American defenders. Admiral Halsey was standing here when he received word from Admiral Chester Nimitz asking where the battleships were. Subsequently, he spent hours trying to decide whether he should continue to take his battleships north with the carriers or send them south to fight Japanese carriers. In the end, the battleship New Jersey was never able to accomplish the mission she was designed to do, to sink enemy battleships. She neither got close enough to the Japanese carriers and battleships in the north to engage them in gunnery range, nor was she cut loose in time to run south and engage the Japanese battleships. This space on the O3 level of New Jersey superstructure was originally reserved for Admiral staff. During the 1980s, it was converted to house Tomahawk missile equipment. Some of Halsey's decisions were undoubtedly made in here. There was also a flag radio room in here, which received the famous World Wonders radio message. The radio message Halsey received from Admiral Nimitz was the turkey trots to water, GG, where, I repeat, where is task group 34, another double letter spacer, and then the world wonders. The turkey trots to water and the world wonders were padding phrases used to help prevent enemy code breakers from understanding the messages. Is if every American message started with from Nimitz, then it would be really easy to figure out what those first words were in order to uh, break the code. So American code breakers always added random phrases. Usually the radio men up, made them up on, them, uh, on the spot. When Halsey's radio men decoded the message, they correctly realized that the turkey trots to water, which was before the double letters, signaling that it was just spacer, should be removed. They incorrectly left the world wonders, which fell after double letters and therefore should have been removed. Uh, they incorrectly left that on the message. 
So when Holsey read it, he read, where I repeat, where is task group 34, the world wonders. Admiral Nimitz never reached out to his officers in the field and second-guessed their commands. So this radio message seemed like a very striking rebuke to Halsey and his leadership that Nimitz had done this unprecedented thing and in such a bold manner. This is the Combat Engagement Center. As designed, this was part of the Admiral's suite. This is where Admiral Halsey would have been living when he was on board the ship commanding Third Fleet. In the 1980s, the space was converted to what you see today as a command and control space for the missiles technologies on board. This is the Admiral's Chief of Staff stateroom. Would have been inhabited by Admiral Mick Carney, who was Halsey's Chief of Staff during the Battle of Leyte Gaul. It's one of the few spaces on the ship that the museum has restored to its World War II appearance. The bed right here is Admiral Halsey's actual bed on loan to us from Naval History and Heritage Command. This is where he would have slept during the battle. Thanks for tuning in with us this week as we remember the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Remember to tune in next week for more content, like, share, and subscribe. And special thanks to George Leon for creating the content in this video.